You have your Bible? Let's say it together. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. A lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. I hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Amen. And amen. Now, in just a moment, you're going to watch something. And it has something to do with the sermon. Don't know why we were brought here. I know why we were brought here. The Lord wants us to hear this word. But uh, I want you to listen to this. It's kind of humorous. And uh, maybe this is scriptures where it came from. But I bet you'll never ever think of this saying or this movie the same at the end of this sermon. Do, do you suppose we'll meet any wild animals? Mm, we might. Animals that, that eat straw? Uh, some, but mostly lions and tigers and bears. Lions? And tigers? And bears. <gasps> Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! 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 Lions and tigers if you read the tease on Facebook, I said, I th what was it? Lions, bears, and snakes? Oh, my. And somebody asked if we were going to be handling snakes in church this morning. I said, you'll have to come to find out. Uh, Mike, go get the snakes. <laughs> it's the sixth Sunday of the month. That's what I told someone one time. They said, do y'all want one of those snake handling churches? I said, no, only on the sixth Sunday of the month. So if you want them, you come that Sunday. I'm glad there's a back door up here, because I'll be gone before y'all bring them out. I'll tell you that right now. Amos chapter 5, however, brings us to the lions and bears and snakes. Oh, my. Amos chapter 5, who would have thunk it that in the Old Testament, a prophet, an old prophet named Amos, who seems to be a little bit angry, rightly so. The Lord speaks to him, and he reminds them that throughout here, but it's very interesting that in this very, this very verse, verse 16, that he makes a declaration and he says, I want you to pay attention. This is what the Lord, it was a generic form of the word for God, the Lord. And then he goes back and he says, the Lord God Almighty. In case you're wondering which God it is, it is the Lord God Almighty who speaks. We might call that El Shaddai or somewhere around. We might translate it into our world as the one who was the beginning and the end. The powerful, the almighty, the everlasting God. The Lord God Almighty says these things. Hear the word of the Lord. There will be wailing in all the streets and cries of anguish in the public square. The farmers will be summoned to weep and the mourners to wail. There will be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord, Yahweh. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? That day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Lions and bears and snakes, oh my. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light? Pitch dark without a ray of brightness. You could also translate that to our understanding, without a ray of hope. I hate, God says, I despise your religious festivals. Your assemblies are a stench to me. Even though you bring me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Though you bring choice fellowship offerings, I will have no regard for them. Away with the music noise of your songs, I will not listen to the music of your harps. 
But let justice roll on like a river. Righteousness like a never failing stream. Lord, help us in these brief moments of time to be reminded of the great day of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. What an amazing description of the day of the Lord. This isn't just any day. This isn't just any hour, but it is the great day day of the Lord that was prophesied by the prophets of the Old Testament, declared by Christ in Matthew. If you're wondering about the coming of the great day of the Lord, read Matthew when he says there will be two walking down the road and one will be taken and one will be left. There will be two grinding at the threshing floor, one will be taken and one will be left. There will be two laying in the bed, one will be taken, one will be left. Just like that. It says the day of the Lord will come. The book of Revelation talks about the day of the Lord. When God enacts His justice on a sin-smitten world. When God finally says, enough. When God finally says what they say in the Congress, sign and die at the end of the sessions. It's over. It's over. Lions, bears, and snakes. He says, that's an incredible day. Maybe you've been places and you've seen signs like this. Wouldn't you like to see a sign like this? Caution, rattlesnakes ahead. Caution, bear bites ahead. Caution, lions. I don't know where beware lions is, but I know one thing. If I saw that sign, there would be a great day coming for me. And you hear about crazy people and their interactions. Just the other week, there was a young person who came in contact with a bear and somehow survived. She did everything that the expert said don't do, and she lived. I love that when people don't do what the experts say. You know, the ones that have never been encountered with lions and bears and snakes. Oh my there are a lot of experts in Amos Day who said, now, if you just do this religious thing right, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to worry about it. If you just do your religious duties, you know, if you just show up and do your thing, you know, and then one day it'll all be over and God's going to get the bad guys, so don't worry about it. And who are the bad guys? I don't know, but I know it's people worse than me. It's sort of the attitude. Sin had run amok. A lot of people in Amos' day were playing church. They knew how to do it. One of my favorite stories that Shonda Pierce tells is when they used to play church. And they'd take the hymnals and they'd sit the hymnals in all the pews. You know, they lived next door like every good Nazarene preacher does, right next door to the church. I want to say I love living next door to the church. But they set the pews up in there, the, the hymnals up in the pews back before we had off the wall singing. And then she said they would always go get a few dictionaries and encyclopedias and Greek lexicons out of their daddy's office and set them all in a line on the front row. And someone came in one day and said, well, I, what are you doing? Oh, we're playing church. My brother's getting ready to preach and me and my sister were about to take up the offering. And they start looking. They say, well, what are these hymnals? Well, these are people. Well, why, do some, why do some hymnals have Kleenexes in them? Oh, that's the people who get blessed in church you know, and wave a hanky. Do Nazarenes even know what that is anymore? I don't know. They used to wave hankies. And then they came to the front and they looked and they noticed the encyclopedia and the lexicon and the dictionaries and... They ask Shonda and her sisters and brother, who in the, what, what in the world are those things? Oh, that's the board members. They know it all. It was her story, not mine, but it was a cute story for a little preacher's kid. There's always somebody, right? I got a great church board here. But I thought, wow, she knew how to do it. And in this day and in this time, in Amos' land, they knew how to do it. 
They had it down to a science. They knew exactly how much the sacrifice should weigh. They knew what psalm to sing at the right time. They had figured out church. Hmm. That's a scary place when you get it all figure things out. One thing's for sure, you can fool all kinds of people. Was it Abraham Lincoln, what did he say? You can fool some of the people some of the time, or please some of the people some of the time. But you can't please all the people all the time, or fool them all the time. See, man has this way of fooling people. And we'll even lie so well that we fool ourselves and tell ourselves, we know how to do church. We know how to be what God wants and we'll just do it and God, you'll take my stuff or else. And Amos was dealing with people and if you read the rest of Amos, you'll see that was the, the status quo of the day. That was the, that was the thing that was going on just so that you knew how to do it all. And then they would talk about, you know, one day God's going to come and God's going to fix all these bad guys. One day God's going to come and He's going to straighten out all these slave drivers. One day God's going to come and He's going to fix all these sinners. And Amos says, this is what the Lord says. One day there will be wailing in the streets. Not streets over there in that place. Not streets over yonder at the sinner's houses. But he says, it will happen right here amongst you, Israel. Amongst the people who say they know how to do church. There will be wailing in the streets. Matter of fact, he says, they won't even have to have professional wailers. You've seen the... You've seen the clips. It's always fascinating, I think, for us as a Western mindset when we turn on the television and we see some of these protests in the Middle East or funerals and you see these people just boohooing and crying out loud and making all these faces and doing all this stuff and you're like, good grief! But they're professional whalers. They do that. And it, it, you, the, the, the more you loved your family member, the more professional whalers you'd even hire. So that more people would be crying. And if nobody liked you, you had to hire a whole lot of wailers. And they would put on the dog. The louder they wailed, the more they cared. And the more they wept and the more they cried. And he says, in that day, there's going to be some wailing in the streets. There's going to be some crying in the streets. And you're not even going to have to pay them because the farmers are going to come to town. They're going to stop what they're doing. The people over here are going to stop what they're doing. And they're all going to be crying because the Lord has come. Because God is enacting justice on His people. His people that said, oh, we know how to do it. It. We've got it down to a science. We know how to sing three songs, an offering, and a prayer, preach it, and go home. And forget about this church stuff. You mean it's, it's almost Sunday again. Oh my goodness. Man, got to go to church. Dog, I don't have time. They were professionals. They knew what they were doing. And Amos says, some of you have been talking about the day of the Lord and all these things, and you're talking about it. One old preacher said, there's a lot of people who like to testify in church. I mean, testify in church. Did you catch that? You'll catch that next week. The Lord says, I'm going to pass through. And when I do, all this time that you've been saying, God, sick them. It's not going to be God sicking all the sinners down the street. He's going to be sicking those who have played, who have toyed with God right in the house. They knew how to do it all. They had it all together. They knew exactly what they were doing. And he says, because you see, sinners don't long for the day of the Lord. Sinners don't talk about the Lord coming. It's those religious people. He says, woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? Now that's an odd question. Come on, Amos. What do you mean? I long for the Lord. He says, there are a lot of people who long for the Lord. who goes, one day, you know, God's coming back. You know that's the truth. Will you be ready? 
lions and bears and tigers, oh my, and all that stuff. You know, he says, you know what? I'm going to come through. I will pass through right beside you. But it will not be like the time when I passed through when the children of Israel were preparing themselves to flee from Egypt. It won't be like that night when God came to deliver them. Oh, this time it will be the moment when God says, I'm tired of all the ugly and the sin and the corruption in the place called the church and the place called the people of God, he says, I'm going to pass through and the remnant will be saved. But those of you who aren't, there will be wailing in the streets because you knew what was coming. You knew what was coming. I will pass through. So Amos would beg us to ask ourselves the question, are we ready? Are we ready for that moment? Are we ready when the Lord will come? You see, Amos is trying to warn Israel that destruction is approaching. It's approaching. There will be wailing in the streets. They will say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call them all into mourning. And all these people will come. And there will be great weeping. But you won't have to pay them now. Because now all of those folks who thought they had it all together will realize they did not. It will said, and, and he gives an interesting illustration. You, you've, you've heard all the expressions, jumped from the pot into the frying pan. Between a rock and a hard place. Went from bad to worse. He says that you'll think you're running from a lion. You'll get away from the lion and the next thing you know there'll be a bear. And finally you'll run into your house and think you're safe. And you'll shut the door and put your hand up and your head on the wall. And when you put your hand up there, the viper will bite you and you'll die. Good night, Amos. What a terrible ending. What a tragic story. He says, but that's what's coming for those of you who want to play, who want to say, oh, God's coming, God's coming, God's coming. And you're telling everybody else, you better watch it, because one day Jesus is going to get you. You know what? Those words work on you just as good as it works on everybody else. One day Jesus is coming. And He's coming to take His church. He's coming to take the faithful. And you won't fool God. At the border. There will be no border jumping. There will be no sneaking in. There will be no back door entry. There will be no side gates. There will be no VIP passes that you can buy online. There will only be one entry point, And that's through Jesus Christ. You see, God hates faking. That's what Amos tells the people. God hates faking. He says, all this time you come to me and you do these things. Matter of fact, God says, I despise your religious festivals. What do you mean? God gave them a lot of festivals. God loves the festival. God loves to party and to celebrate. He says, but your festivals don't mean anything because you're just doing it because you know how to do it. You don't bring your heart. You don't bring your soul. It's not truthful. It's all fake. Amen. You came to do your time. He says, don't do your time. God says, I'm not interested in that. If that's all you're doing, it's a stench. It's not acceptable. Don't grudgingly give your offerings. Don't grudgingly give your time. Don't go, oh man, i got to go. You don't have to. Go enjoy the things of the world and see where they get you. But certainly don't bring damnation to yourself when you know what's the right thing and you still choose to do the wrong thing. 1 Samuel, you remember that verse, very famous verse. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You know, that's still the truth. That's still the truth. You can fool your neighbor, but you can't fool God. Children, teenagers, they're all gone. But teenagers, you can fool your parents. But you can't fool God. Mom and dad, you can fool your kids, but you can't fool God. Will you follow the Lord with all of your heart? Or will you make yourselves and your lives a simple big fake mess? You know, that's an interesting thought. As Amos looks at these people, I mean, what else do they have to turn to? I mean, they've seen it all. They've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. What more could God do? And yet they, some reason, for some way, I don't understand it, they never would be obedient and be faithful to God. 
They were always wanting to play with the other gods down the street. They were always wanting to accept and adopt the, 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 the pagan rituals and terms and lifestyles and relationships, much like people do today. You see, to be a Christian, it requires something different than living like the world and telling everybody, I'm going to heaven. Isn't that interesting? It takes more than telling people you're going to heaven. It takes living like you're going to heaven. Yes. God hates fakes. How many of you would like a counterfeit $100 bill? Not really, huh? If they catch you with it, they'll, they'll bust you for it. You try to take it up to Lee's bank and get 520s for it, they won't trade you. Greedy bank. It's got the same man's face on it. Why does it not count? You know, sort of like going to New York and looking for those Louis Vuitton bags. There's a reason they cost $20. The handles don't last so long. The indicia is spelled backwards. The stitching's done wrong. You know, a, a true Louis Vuitton expert or a Michael Kors expert says, hmm, are you sure? It's still kind of fun chasing a little Chinese lady around Chinatown trying to get your knockoff bag. But knockoff money, no one wants knockoff money. No one wants your knockoff money. God doesn't want your knockoff relationship. God doesn't want your knockoff religion and your knockoff prayer and your knockoff offerings. He doesn't want your fake stuff. He says, I can't stand it. He does say this, love, justice, and mercy. Hmm. I was talking with someone this week about a problem they were having at their church. And I could understand it was a bad, valid problem. It was a big problem. And yeah, there are rules and things that we have to do, but there's also something about grace, justice, and mercy. And somewhere along the way, we've forgotten and we know how to do church and we've got it all together and we've got a paragraph for everything. And somewhere along the way, we left our hearts somewhere back yonder. Oh God, help us never to know how to just do church. How to just do Christianity. To put God in a box and to have Him neatly wrapped up. But oh God, teach us to love justice and mercy to care, and to be compassionate. As a matter of fact, in Corinthians, if you remember that, they had that issue there. He said, you can give your body to be burned. And if you don't have love, you're nothing. You can talk all day long about God. You can do like the people are doing here. God's coming. You better watch out. He's going to get you. You can say that all day long, but you can make your life be a gong and a clanging cymbal. And if you don't have love, it's nothing. You can have your own TV show. I was listening to some nut job preacher this morning on television just to see what he was saying. Did I say that out loud? And as I listened to what he said, I said, please tell me how to find Jesus. I'd love to know where Jesus is. It reminds me of the men who came that day and they said, sir, we want to see Jesus. Oh God, if we're not telling people about the love and the mercy and the justice of Christ, we have not told them the gospel. If you aren't living by the love of Christ and the justice of Christ and the mercy of Christ, we are not living the gospel. Amos says here under the inspiration of the Spirit, given from the voice and the mouth of God, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never Failing stream. One thing's for sure. You set your little plastic bottle out there and put the lid on and you put it in a river. It's not going to stay stagnant. It's not going to be stuck behind and just sit there and go, no, I don't think I want to float. It will be pushed on by the river. One of the most fascinating things I've seen is that big giant Nashville flood a few years ago. Remember that great big flood made television and Michelle school where she used to teach at? The school was floating out in the middle of Interstate 24. We saw that right live on TV. We're watching it. Michelle's like, oh my goodness. 
Well, I went up there a few weeks later and for a pastor's conference and just took a tour of some of those places. And I saw trees 20 feet in the air with paper and garbage stuck from the flood. We went over to another part of town and there was an electrical facility, a plant there that had all the poles and all this stuff, one of the NES electric company where they stored all of their power poles and not just wooden power, concrete, those solid power poles for giant transformer lines. And they had literally floated across the interstate and were over in the woods 200 yards away. You talk about let justice roll on like a river when water comes. Ask the people in Colorado this week. That's the people in New Mexico this week. When water comes, it does not respect anyone, but it is. Period. Let justice roll on like a river. Like a never failing stream may righteousness endure. Love, justice, and mercy. That is, our, that is our cry. You know what? A couple verses before, just in case, Amos says, I want to tell you there's a way out. There's a way to be ready when the day of the Lord comes. There's a way to be prepared when God Himself will come down and He will separate the sheep from the goat. When He will go from the left and the right. When He will say heaven or hell. There is a way to be ready and you can stop faking it. You can stop being a knockoff today. You can be the authentic, real, born again believer that God would long for you to be. That it's time for the church to stand up and to be the church, not some imitation fake thing. But that we would stand up and we would say, Seek good, not evil, that you may live. If you're chasing evil in this world, you'll go to hell. I didn't make it up. That's just what the Word says. Then the Lord God Almighty will be with you just as you say He is. There are a lot of people saying, I'm ready. But you're still seeking evil. You're still seeking the things of the world. Stop seeking the world. Stop seeking evil. Seek the things that are good. Because the Lord God Almighty says He will be with you then just as you say He is. And I want to tell you something. When God walks with you, then you truly can say, I am not afraid of the bear or the lion or the snake or the tiger oh my that I can walk and I don't have to be afraid that the word of the Lord says that where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom that the word of the Lord says that perfect love cast out all fear when the love of God invades your life and you can't fake the love of God when that invades your life then you will walk and love mercy and love justice And love the Christ. That you truly will hate evil. That you truly will love good. You will maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Israel. You know what? If you will do these things, the day of the Lord coming will not be a frightening day. Because you see, grace really is available. Grace is available. Acts 7, 7 says, or Amos 7, 7 7 says, This is what He showed me. The Lord was standing by a wall that has been built true to plumb. You thought you'd come up with that. That's a pretty interesting illustration. With a plumb line in His hand. And the Lord asked me, What do you see, Amos? A plumb line. I replied. Then the Lord said, Look, I am setting a plumb line among my people. There is a standard, and it is the standard of the cross for the church today. Will you be willing to follow Christ to the cross? See, there's a standard. There's a standard, oh, I know. Woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Do you long for the day of the Lord? If so, are you ready for the day of the Lord? Why do you long for the day of the Lord? Because He's coming for you or because you're saying, ah, God's going to get you. God's going to take care of all sin. He's coming to take care of these things. You see, for those who are not ready, he says you'll be running from the lion, bump into the bear, think you find safety in your house, lean your head upon the wall, and there you will find a poisonous snake. You see, you won't run from justice and the mercy of God or the justice and the judgment of God. 
unless you first find the justice and the mercy of God. So this morning, 1 Thessalonians 5, as we get ready to close, brothers and sisters, about the times and the dates, we don't need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, when everyone is saying peace and safety, then destruction will come. You see, God has a plan. And just like he told Amos in that day, I'm coming, people be ready. He inspires through the Holy Scriptures in the book of Thessalonians to the Apostle Paul, tell the church, I'm coming, be ready. It's going to be like a thief in the night. And if you knew the thief was coming, you'd have stood there and waiting, wouldn't you? Be waiting, be ready. Nothing worse than coming into finding that the thief has come. And you think to yourself a thousand different things you should have done, but it doesn't change the fact the thief came. Don't mess with being a fake. Don't be artificial. Be a Christian. Stop playing church. Stop running. And envelop and embrace the message of the cross. Find the plumb line of God. Don't compare yourself to the world. Well, I'm not as bad as they are. That's not the plumb line. Christ is the plumb line, Amos said. God is the plumb line, the Word says. You can still repent. There's still mercy. There's still grace. There's still an available God with an available mercy and an available love that would come for you so that finally on the day of the Lord, when He does come, He will not look at you and say, why were you playing church? But He will say, well done. That little bit I say at the end of church every Sunday isn't just a bit to be said, but I believe that. And I long for that day. I long for that day. When we hear Him say, well done. Oh, I pray that every one of us will hear those words. The alternative is, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I know you not. But Oh, I want to hear those words. Well done, good and faithful servant. I think about some that I know that have gone, that have already heard that charge. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Oh, don't be a knockoff. You see, you can fool your husband, you can fool your wife, you can fool your children, you can fool the preacher, you can fool the choir, you can fool everybody. But you won't fool God on that great getting up morning. Well done, you were real about this thing. Well done, you tried to love everybody you could. Well done, you prayed for those who spitefully used you. Well done, you've been faithful over a few things, I will place you in charge of many. Wow. I want to tell you what. That great day of the Lord, it will not be bright. It will be dark and hopeless if you do not know the grace of God. It will not be something you're going to wiggle your way out. You'll charm your way out. You'll bribe your way out. God don't need your money and he's not impressed with your personality or charm. The only thing that will make it so that you can have a place of hearing well done will be because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You'll hear that because of the blood of Jesus. Not because of what you did. Because you trusted in the blood of Jesus and you were so radically in love with the Master that you were not a fan who screamed yay on Saturdays and forgot about God Monday through Friday. But you will be a follower. You will be a follower. When you follow Jesus, Jesus is going somewhere every day. Jesus is moving every day. It's not just a Sunday event that your life should be, but it's a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And as the old song says, an all-day Sunday. I'd propose it be all day every day. We would be followers of Christ. Well done, you were real about this thing. Well done, you tried to love everybody. Well done, you prayed for those who despitefully used you and persecuted you. Well done, you've been faithful over the few things. Come on up, enter into the joy of the Lord. Are you ready for the great day? If you're not, woe be unto you, the Word says. 
But I'm glad that even in the book of Amos, God said there's a way of escape. And for those of here, you here today, there's a place of mercy and grace. And it comes at the foot of the cross. Where the plumb line you see is level. Isn't that amazing? It's level at the foot of the cross for each and every one of you. Would you stand? There's a great day coming. A great day coming, there's a great day coming by and by When the saints and the sinners shall be parted right and left For that day to come Oh, are you ready? Judgment Day. Are you ready? Are you ready for the Judgment Day? Would you bow your head and close your eyes? Don't need to drag it out. You know if you're ready or not. I hope I'm ready, preacher. Uh uh. That won't work. Wrong answer. your child were laying dying in a hospital and the doctor looked at you and he said I hope we got this thing figured out I think we've got it figured out you'd look at the doctor and you say no doctor I I don't want to just hope that my child's okay I don't want to just think that my child's okay I want to know quit hoping you're right and know that you're right you can know that you're right with God today You can know that you're right. Have Judgment Day honesty. You don't want to be honest now because I'll tell you one thing. In that great day, Amos said, Woe be unto you. There'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Even the farmers will stop farming. The the workmen will stop working because they'll know. They'll know. That the day of the Lord that had been long talked about, that the prophets had spoken of, that Moses told them to be ready for, that Joshua said be ready for, that Isaiah declared over and over again, that they finally said, you know what? God finally did it. And we weren't ready. Don't hope you're ready. No, you're ready. According to the plumb line of Jesus Christ and the words that He spoke. The words that He spoke. Not what the preacher even said this morning, but what Christ spoke. Search the scriptures. Know for yourself. The book, I think New Testament, I think it's the book of Jude says, work out your own soul salvation and fear and trembling. Know that you're right with God for yourself. This is important stuff. You want to know for yourself. Don't trust in your grandma's religion. Trust in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can be ready. And this won't be a sad song. This will be a great song because you say, Maranatha, Lord Jesus, I'm ready for your coming. I'm ready for your return because I know that my heart is right with God. Are you right with God? That last verse there. Put it on that last verse. It says there's a sad day coming, a sad day coming. There's a sad day coming by and by. When the sinners shall hear his doom, depart, I know you not. Are you ready for that day to come? It doesn't have to be sad. It can be a great day glorious day. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, faithful servant. I can't wait to hear those words. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's sing that chorus as we close. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the judgment day? you bow your head and close your eyes and say pastor pray for me I I need to continue to seek the Lord I want to know that I'm ready just pray for me I'll be praying for you this week amen amen I want you to be ready amen I want you to be ready amen I want you to be ready amen amen oh I want you to be ready because I want to tell you what I has not seen nor has ear heard what the Lord has in store for those who love him 
Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid of the bears and the lions and the snakes. But you can know that your heart's right with God. Now, Lord, I pray that you would bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Bless us in our coming and our going, our lying down, our rising up, our labor, our leisure, our laughter, our tears, until we come to stand before you, dear Jesus, on that great day of the Lord. For those who know you, it will be a wonderful day. For those who do not know you, it will be the dreadful day of the Lord. But, oh God, we're so glad that you have redeemed And you have claimed for your own a people who would love you and follow you. So now, Lord, we long for that day when we hear the words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.